Hi everyone, I'm Christian Gonzalez, joined today by Florida State women's tennis head coach, Jen High. Coach, welcome and thank you for meeting with us today. Absolutely, thanks Christian, appreciate the time. So please tell us, we're anxious, how are you doing? Yeah, uh, doing good, doing good so far. I think um, we're all just trying to figure out the this new norm, what this is, and every day we get out of bed and still trying to figure it all out. Um, but, you know, uh, so far so good. Um, just, you know, we're kind of riding the storm right now and, and uh, just being really responsible and, you know, keeping checking in with people. But so far so good. The family's safe. Um, everything's solid. Good to hear. You know, we're all trying to adapt to, the, to this new normal. Yeah. So what is some kind of structure that you implement every day, you know, to keep you going and, and find that sense of normalcy that we used to have? Yeah, I mean, it's it's interesting. I was thinking about this probably two weeks ago, but you know, this time of year, March, April, May, for us is always, you know, the, you already have your structure built in, right? You're getting up, you're going, you're practicing, playing, and, and so it's taken a, a, a pretty significant effort to reestablish patterns of what is the last 25 years. I know for my life, personally, professionally, uh, finding kind of a new role. Um, I mean that as in a new vibe of, of getting up each morning and kind of having a purpose um, because our purpose obviously has changed greatly in the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, I think the big thing is, you know, staying very connected with the team. Um, I think we're you know, reaching out to them often. Uh, you know, we had a, a fantastic Zoom call yesterday where we had all staff and the whole team on. And, you know, you've seen people do that now that everyone was settled. We really just wanted to take a minute to kind of update them some stuff and spend some time. And, and it keeps coming back to how great that is, you know, and, and, and then connecting with boosters and connecting with former players and just kind of, you know, we have a minute to kind of reach back and grab back on some of those friendships and relationships. And that's been a part of kind of the daily things that we're doing. Um, obviously taking care of the family is very important right now and, and, and being very, you know, smart with social distancing. Um, we don't have much of an option because right now they actually have gates up on our tennis courts. So working from home from, for, for myself and my staff is kind of a, a no brainer because we, we can get into the courts, but it's, uh, it's a, bit of a, a bit of a project. Um, obviously being outdoors as much as we can grab some sun, you know, and, and, and be mindful of, of fresh air and doing some, you know, physical activity, obviously important. You know, we're still working on scheduling. We're still working on, you know, plans for next season. We haven't taken our eye off the prize of that, but it's just kind of hitting a little bit of, you know, we're, we're tapping the brakes a little bit right now and kind of letting things settle and seeing where this, this whole thing takes everybody. You talked on communicating with your student athletes, your staff. What are some of the things that you talk about during these Zoom meetings? You know, I think right now everyone seems to be, you know, I've got a couple kids that are sick. I've got a couple families, their family members have been sick. Don't know if they've got Corona, some do. I mean, it's just, uh, so family being solid and everyone feeling safe, I think has been the big thing. And, you know, we were fortunate enough to get most of the girls home. Um, so they're, you know, a lot of them are confined. You know, there's a lot of, uh, for obviously having a, a very global team, there's a lot of places that, that, you know, they're on lockdown. And so they're learning to adjust how to do exercises, you know, in their house, in their bedroom, no access to outdoors, no access, very little access to tennis courts. And so we're talking a lot about that and, and just making sure that they're okay mentally, because I think, I don't care if you're 50 or you're 20, uh, this is very new. There's no playbook for, for what everyone's kind of experiencing right now. And, you know, uh, trying to keep things and not complicate things too much, keep it very simple right now. And, and you know, there are, we talk about school, you know, and it's the one thing they, they have control over right now, you know? Um, they can stay focused on their schoolwork. They've all got the online classes. They, they've done a really good job of coming up with their schedules and keeping their academics as a priority, which is a big part of, you know, of what we, what we do. And, you know, they're, they're kind of enjoying uh, that structure as well because everything else has been so thrown out of structure. So those are a couple of things that we end up speaking about, having some good laughs as well. There's two the athletes, you said, very global team. Thankfully, most of them were able to go back home and be with their families, but they still have classes, as you mentioned. How are they adjusting to it, and what are some of the challenges that they may be facing? Yeah, I think, I think um, we have quite a few that really enjoy being in, in seat in the classroom. They really like to learn, and I think the distance learning obviously is, an, is, it, is it not an option right now. They're going to have to adapt. So I think... Um, the big thing that they've had to do is set schedules, you know, set schedules, have this time carved out in your day where your focus is simply on, you know, your academic 
tasks, you know, for that day. And, and I, I think they've rolled with it really well. I mean, they're, they're kind of taking it on the chin. They're making it, you know, this, this, this demographic, this age group can, they adjust really well. You know, they, they're very dynamic in what they can adapt to. And so I think, I think they're doing pretty good with it. And I think they're actually really enjoying it. I want to go back to the phenomenal season you were having ranked in the top five in the nation and as high as number two for several weeks. Um, please uh, guide us through that, through how the season was going and maybe some key aspects that were helping the team succeed on the court. Yeah. Um, yeah, we finished when it got called a couple weeks ago and still we're, we're sitting at number two in the country. Um, second ranked team in the, in the country. Um, how we got there uh, was a crazy ride. Um, you know, how we got there was from a tremendous amount of investment and work and, um, you know, buy-in from the girls, from the student athletes. Um, the freshman class came in and they just were hell on wheels. I mean, they just came in and were not going to be denied and they weren't going to sit back and learn how to figure out things. They were like, let's get after this. Let's, let's make this team and these seniors have the best season of their lives. And you know, they were huge. Our, our upperclassmen leadership was amazing. They did a fantastic job of keeping, um, you know, the nuances of the team pretty tight. And, and I think um, there's a lot of hard work. We had a little bit of luck along the way. Um, it was just a lot of belief. That was the thing that started, like, we, we went to Hawaii and ended up playing two matches in Hawaii in January. And we got through some pretty, really tough matches out there. And I think that got the girls' attention of saying, I think we're pretty, like, we're pretty good. Like, we know we're good on paper, but then they started seeing that grow and grow and grow. And then, you know, we knock off a couple teams and, you know, qualify for indoors. We defend home court at, you know, kickoff weekend. You know, there's a lot of, it was just this uh, beautiful ball of, of momentum that we, we really, you know, started early and kept going until they shut, shut us down a couple weeks ago. And, um, you know, still sitting at two in the country, final rankings will come out in a couple weeks. Um, I don't imagine we'll, we'll move a whole lot, um, might move down one or two spots, but I mean, tremendous effort, tremendous season, albeit short, um, uh, definitely one for the history books and, uh, you know, it's a shame it got cut short, but, uh, you know, there's some bigger things at play now that, that really make it, uh, gives you a lot of, you know, it, it humbles you a little bit, makes you realize there's a lot bigger picture of stuff going on out there too. Certainly don't want to take away from the efforts of the kids. They, they, were, they, were, they were so rock solid and, and rock stars this year. And just uh, happy for them that they were create, able to create those moments. Breaking the news to the team that the season got canceled. How did that go? What were the reactions? Uh, yeah, that was, that was probably one of the worst days I've had. I've had a couple really, really tough days in my career worth – I you know, had a young lady get into a car accident and another girl get into a motorcycle accident. And, um, you know, we've had some from pretty, from pretty stuff, tough stuff over the years. This was, this was tough. I think part of the reason it was most difficult is the finality potentially for the seniors that that was really tough because they were so instrumental to where we have, where we started and where we are now. And then everybody else and in, staff included not really having answers, you know, and, and, you know, it's hard to console a group of people and youngsters when you don't for yourself really even know, you know, what's going on. And, and because, again, like no one's been through this before. It's the first time in, in our lifetimes and hopefully the last where we have to experience anything like this. But, you know, it was, that was not a fun day. That was, that was not a fun day. It was, it, it's a bit cloudy, to be honest. I think for everyone, it's still hard to believe. But, um, yeah, you know, I think you know, in, in time, it, I think we're all going to be better for it down the road. And I think, you know, this is life and, and, you know, we're constantly having to adapt and adjust. And this is just another situation where that's the case. And, and, you know, and again, not to take anything away from what they did this season, because this season, albeit short, they were, they have nothing to do, but feel so abundantly proud for everything that they accomplished because they were, they were amazing. And, and, you know, it's easy to say, you know, but for the kids, I think it's kind of hard to, take that and have it mean a whole lot right now. And I think in, in time, that'll help. It'll get better. For you as a coach and your coaching staff, um, in terms of the current situation, what are your biggest challenges and opportunities? Mm. Um, I think the challenges are just, you know, falling out of structure, you know, falling out of the day-to-day -day that everyone's struggling with. I don't think it's any different from 
from any other human that's living on the planet right now and dealing with this. Um, you know, and, and I think because um, as coaches and teams and athletes in general, I think uh, there's a hyper focus when you're in season and, and kind of being in a different space this time of year. It's really, I know for me, it's very challenging. I know for Mark, very challenging as well. It's what we've done for the better part of, you know, combined five decades, you know, so um, that's a huge challenge every day because you want to recruit, you want to get in the plane and go, you want to go watch kids play, you want to train kids on campus. There's so I mean, just that, that rattle, it's been rattled, you know, and that's kind of weird opportunities. And I think this has become very clear in the last couple of days. And again, there's some of the context with family and former players and, in, in former friends and everything, like just connecting again with people that when you get so busy in the spring season, you don't really have time, you know, you don't, you know, and then it's on the recruiting and then it's onto this and it's onto that. So I think the pause button is actually, it's actually been kind of nice. Um, you know, it's in, in that way and that we're able to kind of connect with people again uh, that, you know, maybe when things get so rushed in season or just in life in general, you, you take for granted or, or maybe just speed right through. And now we actually don't have a choice but to pause. And, and I think that's probably been one of the biggest opportunities, if you will, that, that I've seen from, you know, a pretty difficult life situation that, that at the end of the day, I think those things are, those matter a lot. Um, we all want things, you know, to resume and continue with our lives. What are you most looking forward to when everyone is able to return to business as usual? What am I most looking forward to? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I, obviously there's so many obvious answers of, you know, getting the kids back and just getting to work and doing what we do and, you know, hopefully having an opportunity to, to, to back up this season, you know, and as we did this season, we backed up last season when we made it to the elite eight, you know, so constantly having that opportunity to keep pushing these, these, these youngsters to be better and to be great and, and push ourselves as coaches to, continue to be, you know, the best leaders that we can be and, and just really missing that direction. You know, we can do it over the, you know, over the screen, but, you know, everyone's kind of in their space right now where, you know, family and, and safety is kind of their priority. And I get it. I mean, that's no sense in complicating things and it needs to be that way for now. But yeah, the first thing I think about, and I'm just thinking about the screen yesterday with everyone's face up on it when we were on the Zoom call. I mean, that that to us, that's why we do what we do is those kids and, and we miss them immensely. And, and I think I can't wait to pick them up from the airport when they all land. Is there anything you'd like to say to the Florida State community, Florida State fans and supporters right now? Yeah, sure. I know. I think... Um, yeah, I think everyone's just kind of going through the same crazy stuff. Um, I just think, I think about the people at the hospitals and the urgent care centers and, and, and the people that are taking care of people and, and you know, friends around the neighborhood and, and friends in town. And it just, the people are taking care of people. And I think that that's one thing that Florida State community does really well. And, and you know, um, everyone stay safe and, and, and stay out of harm's way and, and take care of you and take care of each other. And, you know, let's just ride this out. And, and then hopefully we get back to, to business as usual down the road. And hopefully it's not too, too long, but that's out of our control. And, and uh, we just hope we can pick up where we left off and, 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 and really look forward to that opportunity whenever, it, whenever it's ready. Coach, don't have any more questions for you today. So thank you so much for taking the time to talk to me and I know I can't wait to see you back on the court, you and your team. Yeah, we can't wait either. Thanks, Christian. You take care of yourself as well. Thank you, you too. Go Nulls. Right. Thanks for the time. Go Nulls.